Little Ham says it's time to rock and roll. Bring the noise. Good evening everyone and welcome to the E-Tim's podcast 2017, first of the year, first for a long while. My name is Desi Mond and on the line at the moment we only have Hector Bandido. Good evening, happy ha- ha- happy Halloween, happy Valentine's, happy New Year, season's greetings, what else did we miss, happy Hanukkah. Just happy in general. Happy Hector. Happy. <laughs> that bring that brings us into quite a, that brings into what we're going to talk about. I don't get to have my customary joke with Ralph about what's happening in Emmerdale because Ralph's currently driving back from the pharmacy after picking up some more tramadol. Uh, but he hopes to join us. He said ten minutes, Hector, but that usually on tramadol that could probably mean about forty-seven minutes. So yes, we'll at see. least. At least. We'll see. We'll see if and when he turns up. Uh, what do we have to talk about tonight? Sadly, it's not been a very eventful couple of months since we last spoke on the podcast, is it? Well, it's uh, been quiet, hasn't yeah, it? Really yeah, quiet. yeah. I think we, we can leave matters like Donald Trump and uh, Brexit, although you are going to put out on Twitter uh, a Donald Trump gag, I believe. It's gone. It's gone. The, the question's gone out to, to the Bamport community. And what, what is what, what qualities could Donald Trump bring? As the new manager of Rangers. Oh, that's well, how sure. topical! How topical! <laughs> yeah, we are cu- cutting edge, folks. Cutting cut edge, edge podcast. Cut big, edge. big orange face. Tango Trump going going to be the new manager of Rangers. What a lovely image! Anyway. And you love this? Can I jump in? Yes. Yeah, a response back already from the wonderful James Dolman. Oh, God bless him. One word: humility. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> they are trying it for that. Okay, even if you can keep an eye on that as we go, and we'll okay. even try and slip a few in, because we'll try and break break up the topic as we go along, and we may need to have a break-in service when Ralph crashes his car into his front room and eventually jumps online. Uh, what do we have to talk about? We have, of course, uh, Celtic, uh, the, the, the form of, that Celtic's been in this season, which has been quite extraordinary. Uh, we're going to touch on uh, that infamous St. Johnson goal. God bless Mr. Lustig. Uh, I know, Hector, you've been championing El Porno Tash Lustig, the Love for Lustig campaign on Twitter. God bless. It seems to have stuck after five years, doesn't <laughs> yeah, it? Yeah, eventually people, people understood he was a classy right back who played with his heart can and I, his head. Can I, can I board people into submission, haven't I? Yeah, Just exactly. Eventually, eventually that's it. That's it. And and I think his wife's starting to help now with our constant Instagram, so people are starting to get the whole Lustig love in picture. So God bless it. We also are going to touch on reborn players. I started listening to reborn players, but I actually ran out of ink. And I yes. said, this wrote everybody. Cause that would, apart from Lee Griffiths, perhaps, but we can touch on that later. Maybe Ralph will be back, because that's a bit of a sore point with him. Uh, I've also got a question about uh, this general systems, etc. Because we've seen quite a, quite a lot of change uh, recently for Celtic, given the personnel changes and injuries and suspensions, etc., and it doesn't seem to have made much difference, let's be honest, results-wise. So that's Celtic. Uh, then we have, I think, there's, I think, I'm not sure, I've not really checked the papers recently. Has something happened across the water at all, Hector? Uh, Whereabouts? Is, 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 I don't France, know. France, France, Clyde, Denmark, Clyde, Denmark. Clyde, Denmark. Oh, maybe. Is Clyde signed something? I heard something. Patrick Fiss over there looking uh-huh. at a new sponsor, is that what it was? It, it's something about a guy called Warburton. A, a, a baker, a baker has apparently been uh, part of an employment tribunal. I don't know what's happened there, but there doesn't seem to be much coverage at the moment in the press about this poor guy and his two mates who have been sacked for for some reason. But uh, we can have a discussion on that because the guy, the guy seems to be doing a great job. Doing a good job. One, far, two tro- one, two trophies last season. Oh, I, I never heard one Celtic fan complain about the guy. And almost a third. Almost a third. <laughs> exactly. So I don't know. I don't know what they were thinking of, but we can come back to the Mark Warburton. I, I saw Mr. 
uh, Brendan Rogers was praising him tonight and saying he'd all, already contact him to say give him his commiserations like a, a true, like a true friend and gentleman would. Well, well, listen as we all know, Brendan's just a beautiful man. Yeah, I wrote this. This is, I mean. Dignity. That's 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 what that's what you say. Exactly. He's a, one of our own. Uh, what else do we have? We also have Ralph. Hopefully, can get on because I was essentially, I was especially wanting him to come on to talk about his sleep out. Ralph and a bunch of the guys from the Neil Lennon CSC in Stoke. They had a sleep out at the Stoke City Stadium. I don't know if it's still called the Britannia or whatever it's called. There. It'll be some betting company, no doubt, named after that by now. Uh, for the Lou McCarry. Uh, I don't want to say hospice, the, the basically the homeless shelter that Lou McCarry and friends uh, look after down the Stoke. So Ralph did a very uh, had a very good uh, sleep out for that, raised raised a lot of money. So that would be a good thing for him to go on and talk about, and hopefully we can start championing that as we move forward. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we also Ralph, Ralph has had a bean his bonnet. So again, the tramadol, the you can see the up and downs of the the pill popping. Through the week in the diary, anyone in his like, diary? He's, he's like a depressed <laughs> Reverend I Am Jolly, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, but every now and again the pills will, will ha, ha, the dopamine or whatever will kick in, and you'll be like, yeah, everything's great, isn't it? The sun was shining this morning, next day he's kicking the dog down the stairs. Yeah. He's do, you know, do, you know what, do you know what Do you know what? It, what it was that talked him? Remember everybody was saying for ages, Ronnie is shite, and every day in the diary he would say, no, just trust me, trust me. You know nothing. Go with him. <laughs> Do you know what? Go with him. I think that's the bit that I actually put him over the edge. Yeah. I'm being honest with you. Yeah. He's, never, he's never been the same since, Ronnie. Uh, he tries to claim it's a sciatic nerve, but I mean, everybody knows he's not got a spine, so what's the chances of that? Absolutely. I don't believe that for a minute. He's still going on about this Resolution 12. Will he ever give it up, honestly? No, I mean. you, know, you know that is his actual, that is his Twitter name, isn't it? <laughs> Revelation 12, I will never give up. I can't and, and then it's a Rick, Rick Astley intro. <laughs> oh, listen, don't slag Rick Astley. I'm going to see him very soon in the concert hall. God bless Rick. Oh, no, uh, no. I am, yes, yes. He's his latest LP. The things you do for love. For indeed, your wife. indeed, mate, things yes. Val- Valentine's Day. Or something just, like love. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's the same amount of pain, let's be honest. Uh, yeah, and Ralph is also looking to cover the, the parking issues. Glasgow District Council and all their wisdom of trying to raise some money or scorch earth before they get evicted in the, the next council elections. I'll I've, look... got cunning, I've got a cunning plan. Sorry, right? yeah, so what was that? <laughs> cunning plan. Why, why don't you and me rattle through the first three or four subjects, right? Then when Ralph comes on, yep. why don't we not tell him, right, but go off the call? And let him talk in the next three topics for the next seven hours. How does that sound? Well, well, we could either do that, or we could save our listeners some pain, and I can actually just kill the recording, and then we should just leave Ralph talking, and, and then, I don't think he will actually know. And then what we could do is give him a call next next Thursday night, and, and you know, <laughs> he'll still be engaged on the first topic. <laughs> I don't know And then all he'd said to me, "No, we have to see this through," and I said, "You're right, all he you're right." That's right. <laughs> that is very, very harsh, harsh but fair, I would say, to be honest. Now, okay, right, I'm going to set the timer because we need to, we need to get uh, dedicated here, right? So we're going to get, we're going to, I'm going to allow you, let's say, 15 minutes. I think we, we'll, I think we might need 15 minutes for Celtic. Keep it so, we're a Celtic website. We're not a Rangers website, even though we do like a bit of comedy. That's fun. Right, indeed, indeed. So, Hector. Yes. Celtic. Are you enjoying this season so far? Oh, <laughs> a simple it, one to begin with. It's like it's like the longest orgasm. Oh, that's a lovely image. Isn't it? <laughs> it's like an eternal orgasm. Is that, is that a better way to put no, it? An eternal a, orgasm. I've saw you play football, too, and that's, <laughs> that's an image. I've, been, I've seen you in shorts. <laughs> uh, that was the best play you've ever seen. Um, but it's, 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 you know how we, we, we have a certain vintage now where, you know, we, 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 we talk to people now who are in their 20s, they go, you're just an old guy. You talk about watching Celtic in the 80s and all that in the 90s. And But I, I at my age, and you, you know that it'll be the same, to, to watch this season progress in front of our eyes from the very first match, was it away in Gibraltar? Mm-hmm. And then since then, just watch month after week after week, month after month, a steady progression with pretty much... The same squad that Ronnie had, two two big exceptions, obviously, is Dembele instead of Griffiths, though, but Griffiths got 40 goals last year, didn't he? 
and Sinclair, who's just wonderful as the song goes. He's a he's a great player. Yeah. But just watching that team, just just build and progress and learn and get educated and just the energy they show, the passion, the football, and then watch the manager and listen to the manager. And you now get to mid February and we're undefeated and you're thinking this is the season really much of dreams. The only difference is obviously European football, right? His first season, but domestically, I have never seen anything like this. And it's it, it's it's a season to be cherished. It's, it's just wonderful to to be part of it, go to the matches, feel the atmosphere. It's just a great time like now as a Celtic fan. That's that that's uh, funny you, you you touch on the Gibraltar redemps uh, because I I remember I was going to pen I was going to pen like a kind of mid-year review, mid-term review, we used to do the old school, kind of, the old school reports. Kiwi Mickler, is he? Uh, I, well, exactly. He's, he's away listening to some indie music, some indie reggae dub somewhere, <laughs> no doubt, <laughs> and, and, and some remote part of New Zealand. But I, I was going to write one of them, and I actually had, this, this would be like, say, the end of November, December, my, my, my grading for Brendan Rogers at that time was going to be a B plus. Because I was still annoyed at getting beat by Gibraltar <laughs> and and getting gubbed by Barcelona, and I was but I don't mean I'm not I, I don't mean annoyed as in raging. Just that way it it, it upped me right. because I thought, but I also in a in a good way because I thought it's still a good reality check for us to remember we're only a game or two away from looking really stupid. So I think that also keeps him and everybody else in their toes because they remember. It's not been, it's not been like an easy season where we've just brushed past folk, and it's just like you're all shite, and we're so 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 much better. Yeah, yeah. You can see the guys are actually working at it, yeah. and even Carl McGregor said the other day, uh, no, I think it was either in the day's paper or yesterday's paper, uh, it's all mental me- mental fitness now, because they're working they work so hard enough the physical fitness that they're as fit as they're going to be physically, but what Brendan Rodgers and the other guys have got into them now is how to make the body or the work or the time. So by the time you, like, you spoke about Sinclair there, my bet every week now is Sinclair to score the last goal because he just seems to find energy as the game goes on and on. It takes him about half an hour to start and then he just becomes this million, a uh, hundred mile an hour player that just can, could run all day. And it's I just think, where does he get that energy for? It's, it's funny you should say about... Uh, the season itself is obviously, you know, if you go back to November, then we had, was it nine games in, in December? Yeah, yeah. And it was pretty much weekend, midweek, weekend, midweek, all the way up to the game in New Year against the Rangers at Ibrox. And we had to win ugly, I suppose, some of those games because it was, it was you know, we'd just done the Champions League. Are, are, you, really tough matches. are you saying we had to grind out, was, we, we, we were looking at grinding out results? Yeah, like all good teams do, we had to yeah. grind out results. And we, we were going to the games and, okay, we, we deserve to win them all, but... It wasn't pretty at times, you know, but you can see the players were getting tired towards, you know, the seventh fucking yeah. game, a game in 15 days or 18 yeah, days. Yeah, and that was including the Champions League. It wasn't exactly. happy on this playing yeah. three teams it, in the cup. Well, it just followed all the Champions mm-hmm. League games throughout November and throughout October and everything else. So, to, to get through that spell in December, then go to Ibrox, obviously, the start of January before the three-week break, and the second-half performance there, as you, and it, it kind of touches on what you were talking about, the energy there the last 20 minutes, half an hour. They ran name ragged. We could have scored five or six goals easily the second half then. And then we've came back after the break, and they just look as if they've stepped up a gear again, don't they? The, the, yeah. the, the, as you say about using the ball, there's a phrase Brendan uses, I think it's recycling the ball, which obviously just means, you know, moving it on quickly. Let the ball do the work kind of thing. Five, ten yard passes, keep moving it. Go down the right, there's nothing available. We take it back the way, go up the left-hand side. All good stuff. But it's the way they keep doing it. And teams might live for you for the first half hour, for the first 45 minutes, but you can see teams starting to wilt yep. after the hour mark because they're chasing the ball all the time. And you're right, I've seen the article that Wee Gregor was interviewed in, and he made a great point as well. He goes, it's not only that. When we lose the ball, our intention is to go and get it as quickly as we possibly can. So we don't give teams a minute's mm-hmm. peace. To get, a, to get a breather. Yep. And that was interesting. So it ticks all the boxes that we've been crying out for for years, but now to actually see it happening, it, 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 is, it is great. It, it's it's just a fantastic season. And I'm going to the games, my, my, my youngest son and my daughter, and say to them, look, make the most of this season. It might never happen. Again, what you're saying, 
and it's just it's a special time to be honest with you. Yeah, definitely. The I can't remember who it was. Somebody posted on Twitter. Oh no, in fact, it was something like Skybet or something. Some some stupid betting site uh, posted uh, Celtic's goals this season, and it was something like seventy five percent of the f- whatever it was. I could be wrong here. We don't need anybody to write in and say it was actually sixty nine percent. Too late. Too late. Exactly. But apparently, the vast majority, let's say, of Celtic's goals always come in the final third of each half. As in, so again, it's 30 minutes, and I know teams back off Celtic, whatever it is, but it is a case of Celtic just relentlessly uh, keep these the oppositions uh, wearing them down like mentally. So again, if you if you if you're constantly chasing a ball and no getting it, fatigue and desperation, and this year uh, I can't be asked with this ness kicks in because it, it does it does really drag you down, and suddenly all you need. Like somebody like Sinclair or Zimbelli, that wee split second, the difference basically gives you enough time to score a goal. And it's that, that is amazing how that can be so different. And like, again, you look at Dembele against Rangers, I mean, like that corner kick, that is literally split second. That, and that's in that's the net, and you're like, what the hell happened? And I mean, like, imagine your poor Danny Wilson, who, lest we forget, lest we forget this year, so this season is. Let us it go, the, let it go. No, it's still the best, the best comedy moment of the season. Mikael Lewis thinks beach ball. I loved it, Mikael. We love you, but the best comedy, the best comedy event of this season has still been the guy who phoned Radio Clyde to ask if Virgil Van Dyke's worth so much money, how much money is Danny Wilson worth? And I swear to God, every time I post on Twitter, every time something happens with Virgil Van Dyke or Rangers, people just keep coming back. Did they say that? That never happened. I went, it did. Jeremy Cullock didn't that happen? <laughs> he's, got, he's got your name, Newton, oh, Newton, isn't he? Exactly, I'm blocked because he's like, just let it go. But I thought that was a that was a comedy line of the year. So Danny Wilson's actually got a fan, which is unbelievable. So talking about Celtic, so just one, just one thing I was going to come in on, and just just on yes, the Celtic, on. obviously the Celtic thing you were talking there is that another thing that that I was just thinking about recently is that. Brendan's got a core squad of say 18 players maybe, maybe yeah. 18 players, 20 players who have played a number of matches each but what I'm finding unusual when I think about it is that every single player has contributed out of that squad it's not been a case that it's just been 11 players or 14 players he's rotated the midfield a fair bit hasn't he yeah. he said obviously Scott Brown's the one the one that's always guaranteed a starting position right but he said Beaton who as you touched upon at the start Reinvented himself probably the last month or so. Uh, as Terence Trent Darby with his new blonde hair, have you seen that? Well, I uh, pretty dashing for me. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. You get the boy McGregor who I I, I think um, has surprised me and probably a lot I of fans. Looks a bit like you. <laughs> your ass. <laughs> I'm at least a foot taller than him. As I, you know. I never say that, but height has been heightest. Aye, I, 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 I'm the height of Big Joe. I can so remember you to Mary's with a face Aye. like Cal McGregor. I'm, I'm, I'm the wee guy like you, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but you look at you look at McGregor, you look at Beaton, Armstrong, Scott Brown, and others who have come in. Liam Henderson recently yep. as well. Look at defence, he's rotating pretty much in three centre oh. backs. But what I'm, what I'm getting is that every single player, when Izzy came in for two months, when, when Tierney was out, Every player has contributed this season, and and I again I'm struggling to think the last time that's actually happened. Yeah, and like before that, I'll come back on that. But what's also really uh, amazing is like the camaraderie. I mean, like you see that somebody posted recently a photo of Izzy jumping up for Kieran Tierney scoring or Kieran Tierney, and it was like sheer joy in Izzy's face. You no, know, that way it wasn't a case of oh bugger, that's me not getting another game for another three months. It was sheer, here we go, we're all one part of the, the, the we're all part of this one team, what we're going to do as, as well as we possibly can do. But this year, you're talking about a rotation. Like, I sat, I sat for, I sat for like weeks and weeks going, when was the last time Selleck played the same back four? Or the same defensive line? Because for weeks it just kept changing. And, I, and it wasn't even a case of, it was changing because we had to change it. I think it was changing because we could change it. Exactly. No, I mean, and that, that's a massive difference of rather than saying, right, you were shite last week, you're getting dropped. There's a case of, right, you were okay last week. 
But Bayata's been really good in training. He's been, he's been outstanding. But no, that way he hasn't. So Bayata's been really good in training, and regardless of what the fans might, this is like, say if we went back six weeks ago, regardless of what the fans might think, Dedrick's, Dedrick's earned his place. He's working as hard as he can possibly work. In you go, Dedrick. Suddenly he's in. And it's a case of Jozo who? And you know you know he'll come back in. But I think it's, it's brilliant how it's all working. Yeah, but like, I think about the, the Bayata thing, just, just on that again, he only got the start because Svechenko was suspended for the game against was it Albion Rovers, remember? Yeah. So he brought him into partner Samunovic. He played well. He kept those two together for the next three matches. He then... Samunovic gets a breather, because remember that boy was out for the last part of last season as well. Yeah. So I think Brendan, he's mentioned this a few times working with the, the sports scientists and the fitness coaches, he'll know that certain players, what he'll do is it's not just giving them 60 minutes, I'll bench them for three matches or four matches, mm-hmm. let them recover, and it also knows that he's got faith in three good centre-backs. And I think that's a great thing for the team, for the midfielders who are rotating four and five players, plenty of rest time as well, but it adds to the camaraderie, doesn't it, in team spirit. They all feel part of what's happening this season, and you can genuinely actually see them, the positivity that's there. It's a great time, a great yeah. time. Yeah, uh, right, so we'll get, well, we don't need to rotate the keeper because I don't think Mr. De- DeVries is going to get much of a chance unless it's towards the end of the season. But then you've got. Just, just on that, sorry, but just, mm-hmm. just on that, right? So, DeVries was brought in just in the transfer deadline time, and I think we played Aberdeen at Celtic Park, and we beat them 3-1 or 4 1, I can't remember. And Gordon was benched. And he was benched for three or four or five games, I can't remember. But the difference in Gordon's level since he came back well, into the team. That is that is that is what I was gonna go. Go with it as in the actual how can we say it's like Brendan has got the lovely balance of the good cop, bad cop, as in listen, I've got bad news for you. <coughs> but the good news is it's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be of benefit in the long run to you. So suddenly, uh, what was that, like four weeks ago, the January window, suddenly Craig Gordon was like the most wanted player in Scotland. You know what I mean? And he was, you're talking about four or five million to Chelsea. A guy who, let's let's not forget, Alan McCoy still claims he offered him a contract or at least talks when he was helping to let him train at Murray Park. And Craig Gordon is still upset about that because he knows he didn't. You know what I mean? So he's yeah. going to get his new contract, and that's so he's got an eye on our uh, bit of stability at the back, knowing that he's there. He's come known with his, his uh, how can we say, sweeper keeper role. He's never no. going to be great at it, you can well, tell. Look at a difference compared huh? to how he has been. I mean, he's actually now, you're right, he's, he's, he's never been a you know, a quality keeper of the ball at his feet, but he's clearly worked hard on it the yeah. last six months, and what a difference it's made to, to him in terms of what he brings to how Rogers wants to play. Because he needs his keeper, as you say, to be that sweeper, to recycle the ball again if required. But the one thing I was going to bring up on Craig Gordon there, and this is for me was the fascinating change in dynamics in terms of the power that Brendan Rodgers had. If that had been 12 months ago and Chelsea had offered £3 million for Craig Gordon, what would have happened? He'd have been sold. Yeah. Absolutely sold, right? No, there's no two ways about it. But Brendan Rodgers decides who comes to the club and who leaves. And that, that for me was, was a big statement that I've not seen picked up on by many people. He's total control of the player budget, obviously approved by the board to him. The player wages, again, work within his, his remit. But he controls that. And for the first time since Martin O'Neill, we've got a manager in full control. And you can see the difference it brings to the club. Well, that was a, that was a good question because uh, that's a good point. This made him total control, etc. Because that was one of the questions on like Radio Clyde Night when somebody phoned in and says uh, if Arsene Wenger was eventually getting moved up the stairs to Arsenal after getting gubbed last night with Bayern Munich, do you think Arsenal would come in to try and tempt Brendan Rodgers away from Celtic? And Gordon Dayell, to be fair to him, says no, because he thinks Brendan is really enjoying what he's doing at Celtic. It's not just he's enjoying winning trophies, but he's enjoying that whole running running the whole football side of things. Yep, yep. You know what I mean? As in being able to say, this is my vision and this this is exactly what I want. And again, when it was at Liverpool, that was very much the director of football, uh, football by committee idea. Yep. I know he like he will still 
champion the fact that oh, I, I sold Raheem Sterling for fifty million and I sold Luis Suarez for sixty seven million or whatever it was. But again, when he wanted a midfielder, they would turn around and say, Here's three midfielders. That may include your Coutinho's or whatever, but it would also include some guy for don't know, to say Czechoslovakia or whatever, or yeah. some some Italian guy, whatever it was, he never got to turn around and go, I want Mr X. Know what I mean? Go and get me Mr X. I mean I think that that is how it's going to be at Celtic. He will, look, he will win Mr X. And you're, a, you're absolutely right. When you look back to the start, the first few months of his tenure, some of the first things that he did were things, obviously, like his own assistant manager. Yep. His own sports oh, well, scientist. Oh, well, that's true. No, 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 but I know. No, dear, no, I forgot about that. Actually, that's a great <laughs> point. I forgot but about that. But he also replaced all the back room staff, like the yep. doctors, mm-hmm. who, and brought in his own guy. The guy thinks a guy from Chelsea, Real Madrid, who's, who's the doctor now. So he's went, I'm making those decisions. John Park, get rid of him. Yep. The guy who was apparently a peer of Ronnie and a peer of other previous managers reporting directly to law. Oh, he, said, he said, well, he's going. I want my own person scouting the players that I want. That, that was massive changes. And you can actually see now the whole the whole dynamics. And the third thing I was going to say about Brendan is, and why I don't think he'll go um, anywhere soon, is if you look at him when he speaks, he goes... I know I'm representing, I'm representing people around the world. I'm the leader of this club. I lead this club. And if you actually look at him and, and listen to the words, he gets it. Well, no, he will be here for ten years, but I think he'll be here for at least four or five seasons. Which, in football terms, is is a long time nowadays. Well, again, well, we've got a difference of opinion there because I think you're looking at two. I think we're looking at an hour two seasons. Uh, we'll get this season, then we're looking at an hour two seasons. Uh, and then he'll end up mine. I think he'll end up at my United, just the way Mourinho tends to be as a kind of three year cycle. And I think Gordon Stratton was right about the whole three year cycle for Celtic managers. The Stratton was a different dynamic though, David. Stratton didn't have the power. Yes. Didn't have the power that Brendan Rogers yeah, has got. Yeah, I don't mean that, but again, like somebody, somebody uh, pinged his own Twitter to say, ah, but you said this and you said that, and one of the pieces that was up on the site. Uh, you said this and said that, and I went, aye, but these things naturally run their course, and I think these days, three years of somebody like Brendan Rodgers at Celtic, and like we all know Celtic's a massive club, etc, etc, but this the harsh reality of things is, and I, I honestly believe, and I don't know why I've always said this thought, that Martin O'Neill will come back and win 10 in a row with Celtic. He'll do his bit with Ireland, next couple of years, that'll be it, him done, Brendan will then move on, we'll win the next three leagues, get to nine, and Brendan, I mean, look, obviously this is no fact something I'm wishing to happen, this is just something I oh, can... It's too late, it's too late, <laughs> it's out there. I, I've, I've tweeted it. This is something I can realistically see happening in the world of football. Brendan gets an offer, Mourinho will leave my United and go and manage Portugal, uh, that will be him done, and then uh, Brendan will go and become my United manager. And then think mate, Martin O'Neill will come and be the Celtic manager for the last for the ten. That's my prophecy. And this is the beauty. This is the beauty of Mystic podcasts. Egg. They're talking shit. Oh, the beauty. Oh, well, wait and see. Wait and see. Well, that, that, that. This is the beauty of podcasts, right? So, so it's brilliant difference of opinion, right? But in a, in a, in a obviously, you know, you, you you think what may happen, Brendan. I I think he's here for at least five years because having listened to what he's been saying. But building, building something special. You don't build something special in two or three seasons. It takes you, I think, at least five years to get your foundations down throughout the club to make it almost that it's a path that's created for the academy players to come through, your scouting network around the world, the money coming through European football, reinvesting that, not just on the pitch, but off the pitch, infrastructure-wise, and to take it forward. I think he's here for five seasons. Unless, of course, he's got a terrible year or something happens. I don't see him going to a club with Man U. Well, because well, hold on, hold on. What could happen to him? Might he get stuck in the new Bayless and interchange with <laughs> well, you, uh, which you keep tweeting about for some reason? <laughs> Listen, these are things that are important. <laughs> you are not Jenny McCulloch. You don't need to have drive time. <laughs> people have got to drive to places out with the south side of Glasgow. People are just starting to ask me, what's the East End road update? And I'm like, I don't stay in the East End. Well, your pal right. does. I bet <laughs> Celtic come from the East End and don't you forget that, right? Hell, there's a few oh. Irish people who disagree right. with you. Now get them in the book. Aye. Right, I never said that. But, <laughs> but, the, but the thing, the thing, the thing, about, the thing about Man United and all that, right? And I get, I get your point, right? 
I, I don't think that will happen because I think the Man United's and the Man City's and the Chelsea's, I think for them, where they operate now, and look at the managers they have at present, they only go for what they see as the absolute elite managers in world football, right? Brendan was Celtic, did well at Liverpool, but he gets sacked. Did well at Swansea. He's up at Celtic with it. You know, your own words and all of words right now, it's a one-team league, but he's bloody doing well at it. I think it doesn't matter. They will go for the next top manager in France or whoever it may be in ex Spain. I think Brendan's not got a chance to go to one of the top six clubs in England. No matter what he does. No, I, well, no, I, well, no I, 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 I do. I do. We're, we're, we're well over time, but I think we'll just keep on this at the moment. Ralph, well, can I ask, I'll, can I ask I'll you try to say, hold on a minute. You've had your piece. Well, can I ask you a question? This is question time. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, go, we'll go to the unionist at the back. Question time is from so Gladstone. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The, guy, the, the guy with the union jack suit. <laughs> the, the arms jacket. Uh, oh, I'm oh, no oh, unionist, but I hate those. <laughs> anyway, anyway, back to Brendan. No, I, I, well, this is this, this is interesting. Like again, Mark Warburton, who is left Rangers, we're not going to go into him in a moment. But one interesting, one interesting thing I noted last week before he left was Mark Warburton talking about how he met a, he met a bunch of he speaks to he speaks to Rangers fans all the time when I'm heading home at the airport. And like he was doing your Lou McCarry flying up and down or commuting up and down. And he'd been at there, he'd been there eighteen months, he'd been at Rangers eighteen months. And I'm kinda of thinking, well, is is Brendan moved up, hook line and sinker? And I, I, obviously it's a modern world and well, you and I have commuted and all that and I'm not but it's just that way of no, but you know your, life is, your life may be elsewhere. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So so and again talking about like the top six managers, I think there's 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 not that many managers. I mean, we're already talking about uh, Pochettino is favourite to get the Barcelona job. Uh, who's who is it? It's uh, who's Argentina? It's uh, Simone at uh, Atletico Madrid. Yeah, he's yeah. he's apparently just waiting to go back to Inter. Is it Inter Milan? Who did he play with in Italy? Um, just the Inter, whoever it was. But he's <laughs> no, rather, no. Again, rather, like, you you think he would be like. He would be going to Man United, or he would be going like Arsenal would be trying to bite his hand off because he seems tailor made for somebody like that. With kind of the, the 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 big club with a chip on the shoulder, that kind of idea. But just an obvious name from your list. Who? Um, big Sam. Okay. Next, next, him on Clyde Knight talking about a time, a time he bet Marino and Marino took the huff, <laughs> and they're laughing on about the clip because he's in the press conference this acting like you're. Your true football manager, just like rough and ready, and I don't give a stuff what he says. Whereas Mourinho was complaining about how it was like anti-football. You know what I mean? It was this, this crap. It was this rubbish to play against, and it's no real, it's no real sportsmanship. That kind of thing, Big Sam. I don't care. I don't care. We beat them. Ha ha ha. <laughs> but but you're just kind of like, I think, please, please, Big Sam. The next Rangers manager, please. But, but, again, they could, they, I mean, but I also saw in the list the other day Alan Pardew, right? And and they have they have the Rangers, but they but, they've, but, got, right, they've not got any money, right? And we're going on to this about they've not I don't believe that for money. a second. Who you been talking? They've to? not got any money, right? Fucking loaded. Ha! <laughs> right, the fifty million pot, they've only got thirty-four million left, right? So when Sam Allardyce left Newcastle, he sent him a postcard in the front of it was this lovely house and in the back of the postcard was written, thank you for my new four million pound holiday home. And that's what he bought with his pie off, you know what I mean? So what chances, how much money was he getting? And Alan Pardew, um, you dare say a guy working in London was on a pretty penny, there's no chance of them getting any, they don't get anybody, they're talking about people from Leeds and Huddersfield, just because these people are in the news and look, tra- there's well saying Simone, or Wenger, or somebody, or Mourinho, because there's as much chance of that happening. Oh, Does that not make it all the sweeter, though? It'll be Graham Murty and then... Right. Oh, but it'll, be, it'll, be, it'll be Barry Ferguson and Alec Ray. Right, that'll, be the, that'll be the two guys who... Ferguson's at Clyde, so it'll cost nothing to get him to Clyde. Alec Ray's out of a job. It'll be they two with Big Eck, director of football. Put your put your mortgage on it, oh. right? It'll be, it'll be something along those lines, right? Mm. Only the gullible, and we know who the gullible are, uh. still believe the shit that the director comes out with. Right, so I think we know that one. Listen, I've got a question for you, right? Yes. I don't know if it's on your agenda list. It's about go. it's about this season and where we are just now. And I mean, is that on your list about what? potential trebles and stuff like that? Oh, well, that, that that was that was at the end for uh, when we were looking to the future for next. But right. oh, we can include that Celtic treble and Celtic purchases were there. 
So I was, I I was going to ask you about this. I was going to ask you this season, right? So where we are now is mid mid Feb, right? We've we've got quarterfinals of Scottish League Cups the bag. The leagues the leagues won, right? Um, do you think <laughs> you've been a bit hasty there, because <laughs> as Aberdeen fan said last night, if they win the next seven and we lose the next seven, it's all we play for, and that well, that's what <laughs> exactly. And it's not been arrogant, but <laughs> being so far ahead, it's it's an obvious thing, right? But listen, here's a question. Two parts, right? Yes. So one. The treble, mm-hmm. in effect, it's beat St Mern at home, right? Which you'd like to think they should win. St mm-hmm. Mern's bottom of the division below is right. Then a semi and a final, right? Win the treble. Do you think, one, that will happen? And two, do you think we'll win the treble and also go undefeated all season domestically? Mm. No, I don't. I don't think we'll go undefeated all season. And the reason for that is, I think we experienced that a long time ago. We, was it Martin O'Neill? Mind we were going through, we were flying through the season, and I remember uh, we, as soon as the league was won, it was just an automatic, uh, a, a human a human uh, frailty of saying, job done, let's relax a bit. But we weren't undefeated though. Uh, uh, well, I, but it's no way, it's like, again, then we start. Right, okay, right, so... No, I don't think we'll go undefeated. Cause I think somebody who who would be in the top like Hearts. I think the Hearts could beat us as we go towards the end of the season, and we're done. We're done. And right, I'll I'll put it back to you, right? Are we done, but? Ah, well, right, well, right. No, but you you said you think we'll win the treble, right? No, I'm talking about the, the league's one, right? No, but hold on. But so you say we're done, right? But my, my point earlier about 18 players in the squad rotating. If we are if we are getting to the cup final, which is normally the last game of the season, surely players are all playing for. Position to start that cup final. Well, well, right, right. You'll get the opposite, of, the opposite of that, right. And again, this is why Brendan Rodgers is a very good manager and a highly paid manager because he's got to deal with these problems. Do you rest the players for the cup final? Do you do you say to your Bruno, you, you've done enough, you've done enough. I am going to save you for the cup final. You can sit out for the next four, four weeks, and I'm going to play. So who do you play in the Bruno position? Do you play Beaton? Do you play Armstrong? And then when him get injured, or then you've got to kind of mix the team you've up. Got, a bit. You've, got, you've got Henderson, you've right. got Gregor all contributing. Yes, right, and, it, and it, it's a good, it's a good, it's a good problem to have. And again, maybe that's maybe that's why Brendan's been doing so much rotation because come the end of the season, and again, this could all tie in when we think about how we're talking about Celtic uh, find more strength towards the end of games, right? Maybe it's a case that we're actually going to get stronger as we go towards the end of the season. Because we've managed to rotate the squad so much, because we've managed to find different systems, because we've managed to play with, without a striker. No, that's the idea. So, again, you, uh, it, there's, a, there's a very good chance we will go undefeated and we will win the treble, but I just don't think it's going to happen. This, it might even happen next year. I just, I, I've just got a feeling it's not going to happen. But to be honest, I wouldn't really lose any sleep if we, if we, if we lost that undefeated. I'd, rather, I'd be quite happy to win the treble, but right. again, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't really try, I wouldn't really try with it either. If it didn't happen, it would be great if it happened. Aye. But it doesn't really mean anything. It's well, just funny, lovely. Oh, it doesn't happen very often. You go, ah, well. Right. Well, I, I, I'm thinking about this a wee bit, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I, if I had the choice, and I can imagine a lot of folks shouting, "Fucking shut up, <laughs> Tom bitch!" Right. Don't, don't impersonate your wife. Or Andy Wayne. The dog just looked up at you like that. I know. <laughs> well, Matt, in our, in our support, I suppose, going to match time, Martin O'Neill won a treble for us, didn't he? His first season. Uh, 2001, 2000, whatever it was. 2001, I think it mm-hmm. was. Jocks, he won two trebles, right? Yeah. Including the big one, which he won four or five trophies that season. So we've won three trebles. Yeah. And our entire history, touching 130 years, We've never ever gone a league season undefeated in 130 years. That that be history to do that. And for me, that's the most. If I had a choice between that and winning the the, the Scottish Cup, winning the treble, to go undefeated 38 games has never happened in history of Scottish football. Rangers did it 100 years ago when it was like an 18 an 18 game league. Mm-hmm. To go 38 games undefeated has never happened. That would be history. And we're a club that always creates history, and I would love that more than anything else. Where we are now, fourteen games to go. I'd love it. I'd really love it. Nice. I would love it. 
14 games to go. Next yeah. two, home with Hamilton, home with Motherwell's next two games, isn't it? Yeah. You'd like to think, you know, there's 12 games to go after that. I, I, think, I, I, I think you've literally just cost Craig Gordon somehow. And it's going to be a case of the next game. Martin McGee's going to, as Craig Gordon goes to walk on the park, Martin McGee's is going to bind Joe and one. That'll be him out for the best day of the season. Get to V's <laughs> and I'm happy with him. No, 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 and Brendan will put Scott Sinclair. I'll just tell Scott Sinclair to hang about the six yard line. Pick up any loose boys. <laughs> See, the fact we're even having this conversation, right? It goes back to when we started the, the, this whole uh, discussion about the start of the season, Gibraltar. He's hardly brought any new players in. We're now mid February, three months to go, and we're undefeated. League Cup's in the bag, quarters of the Scottish, 24 points clear in the league and undefeated. It's incredible, isn't it? It just is. It's incredible. So, so what, so what, what skill grading are we are we giving Brendan at the moment then? Domestically, it's still a B plus. Right, if it's domestically, if it's just domestically, it's an A plus, isn't it? Oh, I think that. If, if you include Europe, which I think you've got to do over the course of a season, um, it'd be an A, but not an A plus, because he's first first Europe. champ. Well, he got to the Champions League pretty much. Right, well, yeah, 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 yeah. Hello. Oh no! Made it. Ralph's really well done. Everyone, Ralph, and Ralph has turned up. The tramadol has kicked off. He's managed to get a new Skype ID. All is well in the world. Welcome back, Ralph, Malv. Oh, that was quite a lot of effort that was to try and get food connected. Anyway, right, okay, right, we're going to... We're, we're, you've, you've, missed, you've missed... I'll tell you exactly what you've missed. You no, have, don't, don't. No, 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 I'll tell you, he has missed... You have missed 33 minutes of conversation about Celtic. But... I'll let you. I'll quickly let you give your assessment, Ralph. On a skill grading system, what would you grade uh, Brendan Rodgers and Celtic this season? So oh, it'd be an A, wouldn't it? Just an A. Just an A. What about so so? Hector picked up on something very interesting there, uh, and we've had that. It's been a it's been a wonderful conversation that you've not been involved in, to be honest. So that's why it was wonderful. <laughs> so, every, every time Hector and I have a slight kind of different view of things, Hector has reminded me that uh, for every like say bad start somewhere like the bad like uh, it seems to it seems to be totally compensated by something else. And Hector, like, I'd even forgot the fact that we we qualify for the Champions League. Not where you you now we're at the stage of I'm forgetting about the fact that we have to qualify for the Champions League. So Brendan's actually raised our expectations to that point of you just remember the games in the, the group stages and we're expecting to be in the group stage. I'm not saying like everything's wonderful and we're living in paradise and uh, we do live in paradise. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But as in suddenly you did, you did like that show, the crap that he had to deal with. I know we're, we're laughing about Gibraltar earlier, but the fact is we went through that quali- we went through the qualifiers and it wasn't it wasn't the most pretty of qualifiers either. Remember like that, Dembele. Certainly wasn't. Well, I should say Dembele's penalty is still the best goal of the season, even out with the most important goal of the season, as well as the the St. Johnson goal was the most beautiful. But watching him take that penalty is one of the most nerve wracking goals I've seen in a long, long time. It was, it was a camp. Do you know it's hard to remember the campaign to be honest, because it all kind of it kind of drew a line under the the start of Rogers' reign. And then it went on to the Champions League, which we never expected much from. Uh, hopes were raised against Manchester City and then dashed again against Borussia. And the, the way it, I'm kind of gutted, and I'm still gutted we're not still in Europe because I think we would have had quite a memorable run. Yeah. But the way it's turned out, it, it's raised expectations for next year. There's yeah. no doubt about that. I, I think also, like well, we, we've mentioned a few times, there's been quite a few reality checks, and one of the one of the the good thing is we seem to have uh, stepped up a level after each reality check. So like Borussia was like a kind of uh, know your place. He's he's only quite there yet. Even though again we were starting to believe our own hype for for some yeah. reason. And there wasn't yeah we dealt with it much better. That. Yeah, and suddenly I think so again uh, before you would have interrupted us, Ralph. <laughs> Hector was Hector was asking about uh, can we go the season undefeated. Uh, Hector would dearly love to see it because in his 87 years on the planet, he's never seen it happen. Ah, uh, that was different, slightly different, <laughs> no, slightly different, right? What we're saying is, what we're saying is, right? We all we all want the treble, obviously, right? And we we must be favourites, odds-on favourites, how we're doing to win that. 
But I've had the choice of the treble or to go in the league undefeated 38 games. Because we've never done that in our history. I would choose going undefeated in the league 38 games if I had the choice. Because we've never done it before. I think it would be an incredible achievement to do that. If it was to be done, it would be astonishing. Because there's always that chance to sort one slip up that takes it away from you. Yep. And and you can't go back and have another shot at it. Once it's lost, it's lost. Uh, no, you're right. I think it would be something to be to be looking back on in my dotage. Right. So right. Say. So, so say if we did say if we did go that right. So say for instance we do go the rest of the season undefeated. Do you think it's valid that Richie Forlang gets manager every year for drawing with us then? <laughs> When you watch that game, we beat them six nothing. How did we manage to draw with them? But that, that actually uh, backs up the point. To get through undefeated would be amazing because it's just that difficult. It's, you've got to be on the ball for thirty-eight games a season, and anything can go wrong in one of them. Yeah, well, plus everybody wants to be the team to beat you. Well, well, Neil Beaton did have a good uh, a, a good point. I thought it was a, a couple of good points when he said today. Uh, he's looking forward to the Motherwell game because they're always hard opponents to play against. And now it's like, no, here we go. Anyway, because they always try, they like, they, they always try and play football against us compared to like, other teams who may not. I'm not going to say say any names, but then you start to think, uh, no, like like we would, I, I wouldn't automatically think Motherwell is a football playing team. You just think of your key flashes, etc. But mm. obviously, people like near beat on and Brendan Rodgers and Scott Brown whatever they're seeing opponents totally different for how fans see them we just assume they're all just cluggers who put 10 guys behind the ball and hope for the best whereby like that you forget Motherwell were beating us 2-0 and beating us well 2-0 it wasn't as if they just get two lucky goals and that kind of thing and then again we stepped up we get into half time and have a, a right good rollicking and suddenly uh, we we go in and win it. I think Billy, Rogers did two two big things in that match that I think sometimes people overlook is that one, he hooked Izzy off after thirty odd minutes, mm-hmm. right? When the wonderful right winger was giving him a hard time and Izzy get booked, and you know what Izzy's like and he's been booked early, he's got a tendency to, you know, lack lack a lot of self control. But at half time Rogers changed the system. He went to a three four three, right? And that that was a massive change for us because we'd be kind of playing four three three. But he went to three defenders and he ran over, ran over the top of them in midfield the second half. And again, that was his tactical knowledge coming to the fore, which was one. Well, you know, it was great to see that. Great to yep. see it. Yep. Yeah. Also, it was good to see the player can adapt to that as well. You know, when he changes things, he'll actually go out and do what he's asked him to do. Yeah. Maybe that's because we've got a bit more faith in him than, shall we say, previous managers. Uh, it must be something they work on. Yeah. It must no, be. No, Maybe may also a combination of. Uh, Fear, fear and faith. I mean, it's a case that you will do it this way. Whereas in a lot of times, a lot, a lot of times you see people go, yeah, when, when players step over that white line, there's nothing you can do about it. And you kind of go, well, is that not really the whole point? And the manager's meant to say, you will play it exactly this way, regardless. And if he has to make changes, he'll make changes. But that kind of brings us back to something we touched on earlier and Ralph we'd also discussed before about the whole system now around Celtic, whereby... If, you, if we're a fan and we see like Liam Henderson's coming in, we don't automatically go, oh shit, who's missing? You kind of go, on you go, son. This is going to be really yeah, good. That's a good point. I mean, like yeah. that sort of idea is like all positive and it's all, or Armstrong's, or Armstrong was playing brilliant, that's great. Armstrong's out, and again, it'll be, oh bugger, that's a whole, that's a whole system buggered. Who's going to, who's going to get in front of the, who's going to get in front of the forwards to get that ball? And it turns out, it was Mikael Lustig. We never saw that coming. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not like guys getting, I mean like total, total kind of faith total in the fit, system. Total, oh, well. total, total football. Well, that, that, yeah. that's St. Johnson goal, mainly. It's amazing how I think it wasn't underappreciated at the time, but when you're watching it, watching the game, you're kind of like, oh, lovely, that's a good goal. And then you go, wait yeah, a minute. And then as if your mind starts to play it back and you're and sort of like that, one pass, two, three, four, four, and it's like 24, 25. All the, way, get, all the way around the pitch and all the way through <laughs> every player, including your goalkeeper. Yeah. I mean, that is just stunning. You see your, see your, your, your point about to, absolutely, it is the goal of the season. It's one of the best goals I've seen in a long time by a Celtic team. But the game last weekend, you touched upon there with Lustig, got the first goal. 
Mm-hmm. It was a great pass for Beaton. Mm-hmm. But Lustig scored that in the striker position Aye. from from open play, right? The fifth goal, I think it was Tierney who scored the header. He's our left back. He scored that goal in the striker position from open play. I can't remember that happening. I've seen you know, a set piece coming in or a full back overlapping and getting a shot in. But to make the run into the striker position as a full back and to do it twice from both full back positions, that's extraordinary. Yep. It's extraordinary. 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 Right. So, uh, what we touched on, we've touched Celtic's run, uh, Rogers, God bless him. Okay, Ralph, Ralph, you'll get ten, uh, you'll get thirty time seconds. Time on. <laughs> thirty seconds to answer this one. And again, I don't know how to phrase it, but it's quite sound negative when I phrase it this. What do you see the future for Brendan Rogers and Celtic? How long do you think Brendan's, Brendan Rogers will be at Celtic? Cast your mind back to when he was at Chelsea. I think he was maybe an it's assistant it's manager it's or something like that. Right. He was offered another job somewhere else. And I can't remember what it was, but it wasn't a good job, as it were. And his reply was, I'm trying to build a career, not ruin one. And then he went on to Swansea and uh, Liverpool, I think it was. He is. I think he's going to be here for a while. I think he wants to, to build something himself. Something he can look back and say, this is this is what I did. And there was a quote when he said it was like being a wee boy at Christmas, putting on your your Celtic uh, tracksuit when he first got the job. So I think um, it was his first love and he's come back to it. I'm hoping he'll stay for a long time. And I think uh, the way that him and Chris Davis were talking last week, they're certainly planning on four or five years. It's about enjoying your job as well. Uh, it's not just the money. If you've got it's a lot of his away, doesn't he? So I think um, I think he's found somewhere where he can build something that he can call his own, and I think that'll keep him going for a few years yet. Okay, you're you're very much in Hector's camp. Hopefully, used to a right, and I'm wrong, but we'll wait and see how it goes. Uh, okay, so that was that was talking about. Uh, oh, lastly, this this weekend's game, Motherwell, Mark McGee's happy army. What do you think? What how do you think we'll go on? We're going to win, but we'll get a couple of 7-0 between now and the end of the season. What I'm more worried about is somebody getting injured again, right. especially against Motherwell. Well, I'm Hector, just saying that Hector's not already cost, Hector's already yeah. cost Craig Gordon. Uh, so, what, all right, okay, Ralph, what it seems you missed most of it, the, la- the last Celtic conversation, really, Lee Griffiths, what do you think? What's, what's going to happen there? Again, Rogers has said that he wants to work with him for three or four years, but uh, it looks like he's having a massive sulk. The wee hint about him not looking after himself might be why he's getting injured. Remember he said about Callum McGregor can come on and instantly adapt to the pace of the team and fit in? I don't think he thinks Griffiths is up to that. And maybe he's just uh, disciplining him. But it's all down to how the player reacts, and uh, the signs aren't that good. But then again, having said that, he's let Chifty go out and loan, so well, uh, I still think you can rely on him. Yeah, but well, I actually thought that was quite strange. Uh, and I've seen people say, aye, I've seen uh, Hector, you'd pinged on Twitter, Chifty, no, last night, and somebody was like, but why? Why, why, why that? And I was genuinely looking at that going, because we don't have another forward at this point in time. Because we don't really know what's going on with Lee Griffiths. And touch wood, Lee Griffiths comes back to being hungry on the bench and gets his chance and it comes and learns finds a place in the team. Let's say if, if he has to if he has to adapt and find his place in Brendan Rodgers' team, then let's pray that he actually manages to do it or becomes a happy enough backup striker to Dembele and then Dembele will eventually move on and somebody else might come in and they might be able to form a partnership. But I'm just I was just thinking as we were talking there, Hector, about needing needing a full squad as we go into the the final part of the season, if suddenly you're doing to Dembele and Scott Sinclair as a supplemental striker, I, I still think we struggled a wee bit in the games because people didn't, we had a striker, because people weren't really sure where they were meant to play. Patrick Roberts was cutting inside and James Ford, and people were starting to run into each other a wee bit. And even though we were winning the games eventually, it still obviously wasn't the... the Correct. Yeah, it didn't look as settled, did it? No. Here's a thought, though. Here's a thought, right? So, also, also on the bench in the last few games, um, he's been the young kid, Jack Aitchison, hasn't yep. he? 
And I don't think Rogers would put a player on the bench that he didn't think had the ability to, to contribute in the pitch. So maybe Aitches is now fully trained with the first team squad and has been for the last month or so. And Rogers has decided he's better than Chichi. Yeah. So I'd rather give rather give the kid a chance to backfill for, you know, obviously Dembele or Griffiths rather than, than Chief Chain, we can let him go. Maybe right. that's what he's thinking. But yeah, but but, but, but he, he was bringing Chief Chain on there for the last few games. And so it's suddenly... Like, remind you know, him that he's there. I mean, I maybe right. just, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe the Polish guys were just going, can you prove to us he's actually mobile? Right. Yeah, but, and you but go... You're, but you're missing an important thing, Daisy, is that Brendan Rodgers is a beautiful person. Oh, that, that's true, yeah. <laughs> he's just doing it the goodness of his heart. So yeah, yeah. But, so but it's more trust from the support when he does or says something other than maybe uh, a few years ago. Mm-hmm. If he decides that Chifty's away on loan and he's happy with ages, and we'll all just say, oh, all right, fair enough. Yeah. Well, here's something. I'm going to say something. Right. right. Listen, Brendan. Right. Lee Griffiths, right. End of the season. Right. If Brendan Rodgers was to say, right, oh, I'm selling him, would you care? Well, that's right. Does anybody no, actually matter at the moment? I, I wouldn't care less because. And that's the difference. I think this 12 months ago, they went, you're bloody joking, he's our best player 12 months ago, right? But Brendan Rodgers, you're laughing to yourself. I've got every faith that if he brings somebody else in, that player will be every bit as good and most likely better than Lee Griffiths. So I think that's, I, I agree 100% there because I think now when we lose somebody, it won't be a case of bringing somebody in that's like a prospect. I think yep. we'll get him better already. And it'll keep increasing the quality, and that's maybe going back to what I said about I'm trying to build something. Everybody that goes away will be replaced by somebody at least as good or better, certainly more experienced. I think no. so there'll still be projects, but I think we'll be more concentrating now on actually achieving something, especially in Europe. Right. Well, that that was part of. We've kind of. I don't even know if we'll get to cover. We can leave some of these items for next week, including. Yeah. The leave Ralph's items. Warburton nonsense item. No, we'll come on to one for Ralph, but we'll leave the other nonsense. But right, but quickly on the Celtic stuff, one of the last things I had here, right, so we had Celtic to treble, which we've discussed about, but also had purchases, right? So given the current squad, and Ralph, I pinged you a quote today uh, from Football 365 looking at Paris Saint Germain's demolition of Barcelona that night. And how the two best players on the park, or two of the best players in the park, were under 21 academy graduates for PSG. And I put to you in the email the, the way forwards. And I, you can kind of see that in Celtic at the moment, I think. We had seven, something, we had, we've had something like seven graduates this year playing in the team. So, where do you see Celtic needing to purchase players? I know we're always looking for this. Yeah, a continuous involvement of uh, raising the stakes and raising the like sixes become sevens and sevens we want to be eights. But where where do you see us needing to buy players that you would automatically say we need to have some down there rather than it'd be quite nice to have some down there. So Hector, I'll go to you. Who would you? What would you say is needed given the current form and the current squad and individuals? What do you think? I would. Um I'd probably be two two positions. Um, I would say to beat on thank you and cash in and get a quality holding uh, holding midfielder playmaker. That's that, well, and I think I think. Well, wait, wait, but before they bought him, we bought the the boy, the boy, whatever his name is. He's, ah, but he's, he's I think that is that really his position? He's, he's a holding midfielder. No, but he's not just holding midfielder. He, he can play box to box as well, right? And you know how Rogers rotates his midfield. I think he likes a core five. When it goes to Champions League, he'll want to play obviously his top three, right? I think that boy is, is, is something he'll come in, hopefully good potential there, but I think Rogers will want, as, as, as Ralph said there, he'll want more of a finished article. So I'd, I'd move Beaton out, I'd have a playmaker there to move the ball quickly. And I'd want, and here's the big thing for us, right? I'd want the equivalent of Scott Sinclair on the right wing. Roberts isn't good enough for me, Forrest isn't good enough for me. If I've contributed well, but if you, a Scott Sinclair's a level above those two, I don't want the same as him on the right hand side. That's the two positions for me. Oh, that's controversial, that, isn't it? Roberts isn't good enough. He's not good enough. Oh. He's, he's only 20. Oh, no, that's, he's the bomb, see, that's the bottom shit. That's the title. Oh. That's the title of the right. podcast right there. Right. Right. <laughs> oh, listen, here's the, here's the question. Right. Here's the question. Right. Compare Roberts to, to Scott Sinclair. Is he the same level as Scott Sinclair? Right, but. 
This is weird. This is weird. This is the first time I've agreed with Hector, not only on one thing, but on several things. He's a different player. Here's Forrest. He's, 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 the two of them combined aren't as good as Scott Sinclair. Right? And if we want to progress, we must have more attacking options that are quality. You want to buy Gabby a bungalow is going the other no, right no, 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 no. <laughs> I, want, I want the equivalent of Scott Sinclair on the right hand side. Somebody who will not just play it wide, but the first chance he gets goes to the striker position when the ball's number one. That's why he scored 14 goals this season. Many as Robert scored. That's, well, that was the original plan back on the dialer. And nobody was. Oh, going oh, 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 Right. Uh, uh, Scott Sinclair well. does it, but the others don't oh. do it. Why did I add him into the scape call? Honestly, <laughs> 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 so, that was so the original well. plan. You have, uh, uh, the I'm central saying, strikers saying, should come uh, for the wings. I'm saying, I'm <laughs> saying, I'm saying right, the, the, uh, every player's contributed this season. There's no way about it. It's fantastic, right? But you asked the question, which areas could Rogers look to to take us yeah. further forward? Because I'm nowhere near the first article. And Rogers has said several times, don't judge me now, judge me in several years what I'm going to build for you. So he's going to look at it and go, wait a minute here, Sinclair's 14 goals, my two strikers are scoring bundles of goals, what am I getting the right hand side here? I'm getting good contribution in terms of work ethic and link up play, but where's the goals? I think he'll target there and he'll target a playmaker in the beaton position. I think it's these two positions you'll target. Ah, it's very, very interesting, very, very, very interesting for him. I've heard that one before and it is, you made a very good, valid argument. Uh, I, I don't know, regards the the playmaker, I think that's a bit of a a footballer's a footballing dream scenario, that that mythical number ten. Even watching Messi the other night, he just get nullified easy enough. No, it's no ten. No, no, it's it's the playmaker in front of the defence I'm talking about, right? It's it's like uh, we call it a, a holding midfielder defensive midfielder. That's midfield. old Craig Gordon's job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, he, he's the sweeper, isn't he, behind the defence? <laughs> exactly, you don't have a defence. The defence no. is up the park now. You know Listings. how? Listings, they're up the park. They're down there. What a cheap version of, of Andrea Pirlo in that <laughs> position. Aye, who does me? Right, that, you know, that position he played, right? You want a player in there who gets the ball and recycles it quickly. Beaton holds on it too long, too often for me. And he's done a good job for us this season. Well, I, I, think, I think that... that as far as I'm aware, I, I no, uh, this is this how I'm, I'm viewing it. That is the new boys. That's going to be the new boys' position, uh, and he'll be the the rangy uh, guy in the middle. I personally, again, I, I could be wrong. I've been wrong according to my prophecies so far tonight. <laughs> but I can see, I can actually see Scott Brown moving back and becoming the sweeper, becoming the centre half at Celtic. That when about that area. And having the young the young bucks in front of him, and he's going to be the guy the the guy who's going to kind of direct play for the back and and direct him forward. No bringing the ball fifty yards. He'll bring the ball twenty yards, or he'll he'll make sure. But uh, okay, and that, this is like over the next couple of years. He'll gradually fade out of being that midfield dynamo because his body's just not to it. And even a couple of times this season, you've seen him kind of getting left for dead with a young buck. And I think that will just be the natural course of events. And hopefully this new guy will come on. Beat on. Uh, again, yeah, thanks very much. You've been very good. Away you go and get some money at Brighton or a Cardo for someday in the Championship. But that will be his kind of level. He'll, he'll go to Spain or something. He will. Oh, that's, that's true. Well, apparently there was an, a, an offer in and accepted, but it just never, or there was an offer in that was of the value we were expecting, something like €5 million Euros, uh, in the January window. Celta Vigo, I believe. So again, but right. So, Beto, what about you, Ralph? What do you think? Are you happy with your centre halves now? You'll get Bayata. I tell you what, that's a different player. That's not the same guy. Somebody took that one away and gave us another one. Just gave us the same name. Uh, we need a couple of things. It's not a specific uh, position. We need somebody that can take free kicks. Uh, we've not had that since Nakamura left. Or even Charlie Mulgrew. Someone that when we've got the ball in that area, it's the equivalent of getting a penalty. Um, we've not had, we've not got that, and we need to look for that. Uh, we also need somebody to protect the more fragile players in the park. Somebody that can um, yeah, dish it out. Yeah, we need someone like that because we're going to get bullied, uh, especially against uh, some of the Latin teams. Uh, 
those two possess- those two roles rather than possessions need to be filled, and we need a, an old goalkeeper because if anything happens to Craig Gordon, it's going to be um, a lot of five-five games and five-fours. That would that would be my priority, and then right. four. Somebody so, to accept well, set pieces because we don't do very well with corners either. Yeah. Okay. Well, Brendan, if you're listening, if you can get us a right-sided <laughs> midfield striker who's really good at free kicks, we are better dig. I think I could save everybody quite a lot of money. Know what I mean? And that's nice, probably already that. looking. That would be ideal. That would be ideal. But that's quite interesting. Like, if, like, uh, if you'd have probably said three months ago or something before the turn of the year, where do we need? Chances are we'd have said like everywhere realistically. We we need an R new big powerful centre half. And that whereas now I think we're, we're all quite comfortable with the centre halves, regardless of what combination. Yep. If it's three at the back, if it's four at the back, uh, right back, we've got Lustig and Gamboa. They're always going to be your six, six point five out of tens. They're never going to be supermen, apart from Lustig can occasionally spring glorious surprises. But they're dependable. Even Gamboa has come on a game, and yep. recently when they get subbed, you could almost see the stadium was like, oh, I didn't need to take him off. But it was just obviously the guy still getting up to speed with the game, and it was for his benefit as well get him around the applause, that sort of thing, that kind of man management. Mm-hmm. But play-wise, he was having a great game. Yeah, here's, the, here's, here's the thing I think with Brendan Rodgers, that, and it's probably how Celtic have been since Martin O'Neill left, I think, to a large degree. Obviously, we striking came in and did a good job and others since then, but I think Rodgers' expectations and his aspirations are, are so far ahead for Celtic than probably what all of us have become accustomed to for the last 10 years. And we look at players and think they've done well, we keep them, keep them, keep them. I think he has in his own head and he's been planning for months and months now to get in some quality. Maybe one or two every summer or one or two every transfer window. Just build it bit by bit by bit and improve that team every year. Because I don't think he just wants to win the league. I think he wants to get to the last 16. Yeah, the at, least, league. at least. Yeah, and to do yeah. that, in all due respect to these guys who have done a brilliant job this season, there's better players out there. Um, and I think he'll have his targets this summer. The, if you like, again, if you think back, like the very first player Celtic were linked with when Brendan Rodgers came was Joe Allen. Mm-hmm. I mean, fourth, and he went to Stoke the next week for his 14 million or whatever. Mm-hmm. And like we can argue how much you think Joe Allen's rough, but you're talking about that level. And I know the English Premiership's inflating that, but he is a quality player who's proven himself in a hard in a in a reputable league. Let's say you're not talking about. I'm going to look to try and pick up somebody for Scunthorpe or uh, the lower leagues or somebody, a, a good SPL player who's done well against us and I'm sure we can bring him on to the next level. Your chief tees that sort of idea. He's not looking at that sort of class of level. He's looking at uh, another level altogether. And again, I think Dembele's shown that if, Dembele's a, a, a really good incentive for a lot of players now to come to Celtic Park. And again, it may, we might end up having an half few wee high quality loan deals just to supplement any big big purchases. Brendan yeah. said Brendan yeah. said he's happy to break your record, so he might go in for a like again. So say say like some sorry some really high class right right sided player comes available for eight ten million. He goes get get me that, and I'll be happy to take two loanees to balance up any any areas where we may be just slightly. Uh, loan numbers. I mean, the other thing as well to consider is the, the, the guys who are out of contract now. Um, because Rogers controls the overall budget in terms of the wages, if he wants to go and attract a player who's maybe in England or in Spain or Germany, this guy might be around £50,000 a week. Mm-hmm. Rogers can now pay that. As long as he balances the budget, he can now pay that. So it opens up a brand new level of player that we've not seen for a long time um, coming to Celtic Park. So maybe maybe add that into what may happen this summer. Well, that's it. Suddenly we see it, the, the next Andy Tom coming along, and then we've got the next three amigos up front. It could all get very exciting. Then we end up with then we end up with John Hughes at the back. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, there's always going to be that Achilles heel, isn't there, somewhere? Let's but just agree... enjoy the moment. Mm-hmm. But no, same as Dem- Dembele is going to be kind of a trailblazer for us. Uh, and even at this, I thought he'd be away in January. I thought it was in. We don't want to take the risk. The old Celtic, well, 
under previous managers, it would have been a case of right. Come back. Come back. That was no. a... Speak into the mic. Ah, can you not hear me? Oh, you, you faded there. Carry on. All right. Well, see, with Dembele, I thought he'd be away as soon as the offer came in, but he's not. Uh, he could have went to other teams for more money and bigger wages, but he didn't. He's obviously got his head in the right uh, head in the right place, and he thought to himself, "Right, I'll go to Celtic to develop." Right, it's not going to be a six-month thing. It might not even be a one or two-year thing. He's only nineteen or twenty, and that book I read, "Living on a Volcano," Rogers takes time out with players. I thought it was a criticism originally of him, but he sits down and he says, "Right, you've got." T- you're 32, 33 to make money to look after yourself, look after your family and Dembele could stay with us, still make himself a millionaire and leave at 24, 25 for a big contract. He's a millionaire already I mean he's a millionaire when he's playing for Celtic Yeah, so the the money's going to be there for him and I think what Rodgers will do is sit down and say to him, learn how to be a player first, spend three or four years you'll get Champions League experience you'll get your medals and then go away and join whoever you want for however much you want. Obviously, if Real Madrid or somebody comes in a wee bit earlier than that, then you'll have to think twice. Oh. But I don't. They're, they're no rush, and he doesn't give the impression that there isn't any rush to get away. Well, watching Paris Saint Germain last night, that Cavani is it Cavani? Uh, he scored, but he's obviously as slow as a week in jail. But he scored something like thirty-two goals and thirty or thirty-four goals, I think it is, in thirty-two games this year. But I was watching that game and I'm thinking you know, there was a couple of there was a couple of through balls. It was just like a yard in front of me. It was he would have got five years ago, whatever. And I was I was just thinking to myself, fifty million. If Paris Saint Germain wanted to come in with fifty million euro and take them barely back to France. Everybody, everybody's a winner. And you could I could, I could actually see them barely helping somebody like Paris Saint Germain winning the, the the Champions League in a few years. And yeah. We've watched him a few times, and we we still it's a big conversation on the bus coming back. We doesn't doesn't seem to be anything outstanding about him, but everything he does, he does very well. You know, you would say that Larson was exceptionally good in the air, or Moravchik was exceptionally good at free kicks, or somebody like Tommy Coyne always seemed to be in the right place at the right time. Now there's Tommy <laughs> Coyne in with A two. Did you see? I'm getting off this right. call. And, uh, <laughs> You see, each of these players had something special about it, something that they were really good at. Whereas Dembele doesn't seem to be anything that catches your eye about him. But he does everything very, very well. Well, I disagree with that. Yeah. Well, what do you think oh, is strength? I, I, I challenge that. Um, You're okay. like keeping the ball in the corner. Oh, I challenge that. Right. Listen, that, that boy's turned 20 last summer. And um, he's the power for a boy of 20 to have so much power is, is, is I think is incredible. He actually bullies um, experienced players, you know, men in their late 20s, 30s. He actually holds, just absolutely bullies them. He's still to, to probably grow in over the next three, four years, five years to reach his physical peak. Um, if you watch how he shows for the ball, so the two goals, he scored a hat-trick. His first goal was Celtic's second, wasn't it, on Saturday. And he got the ball in the halfway line. He got the ball in the halfway line. The play was maybe 15 yards ahead of him. He turned and chipped the ball over to Forrest. And Forrest cut inside. The guy slipped. And barely sprinted, uh, was it 30, 40 yards, to get the cut back to Forrest. And he did the same for his second goal. So there's things that he does at 20-year-old that are exceptional. And he's only going to get better. Um, I, I, I think, <laughs> I think, I think maybe, in a, maybe in about three or four years' time, he might reach Tommy's kind of level, but right now... Um, no, oh, it's, it's, it needs to have something to aim at, you're right. The, the, boy, <laughs> the, boy, the boy's a fantastic player. Listen, right through... I'm not, I'm not through, disputing that. It's, everything. it's maybe just player. that he, It's like it says, just that he seems to be very good at everything. No. And, and then that that's... maybe... Uh, and that maybe detracts a wee bit from how good he is. No, I, it's a, no, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a kind of reasonable point for, from somebody watching the game because he keeps it. He doesn't do it badly. So if you know, if you know what I'm saying, didn't do it. Yeah. Maybe, so maybe you kind of go, it. you don't just only go. Oh, at least never like uh, watching a lot of Celtic players in the past. You might have go. Oh, at least never lost the ball that time. Whereas at Newby and Bellets, like, but, but again, we're not even greedy. It's no different. Kind of go. 
oh, he missed a chance there, he shouldn't have missed that, you kind of go, he'll get the next one. Everything, everything's like viewed positively now, rather like, as I say, like, oh, Henderson's in for Armstrong, on you go, son, rather than, oh, who's going to get, who's going to score the goals? Now it's all positive and we kind of see things in a different light. But I think the one thing, Deji, that goes against him, barely with some fans at times, is that he doesn't look 20. He looks as if he's like 25, 26, because of how he's built and the size of him. And Henrik came to us at 20, was it 27? Henrik came to us. Sutton was 29 or something like that. Hartson was 29. He's a kid, but he looks so much older. I think fans have got to remember that sometimes. This guy's starting his career. 18 months' time, he's going to be unbelievable. So mm. I think no, that's one I watch with this guy. He, d- he doesn't play like a 19 year old at all, does he? <laughs> it, it's. Can I, maybe need to check his birth certificate or something. See, you know, if only we had, uh, if only we had an Arden Belly on the right hand side who could score, <laughs> that would be that. Well, well, we may well have. He's fourteen, he's fourteen year old, isn't he? <laughs> well, that's, true. that's very true. Give him a chance. Okay. Uh, yes, right. Okay, so we'll leave that at the moment. I think we've done enough. We're we're over the we're over the the war mark. Right. So we're going to we're going to leave uh, the war the war Britain situation. We're going to leave that all together because. Uh, well, we can come back to that in the next podcast because I think this is going to run and run. Yeah, it'll have right. changed by the time I'm doing listeners. To one, of, one of the things I really wanted to speak about tonight, Ralph, I'm glad you managed to get on, uh, was your Macari uh, benefit sleep out. Can you tell the listeners about that, please? It's Well, we did it because, as you know, we've been involved with the Macari Centre for a while now. And Stoke City Community Trust, I think they're called, they do this this thing every year. And what happens, you go into the stadium and you sleep in the concourse, which is, it's almost the equivalent of sleeping in one of the concourses at Celtic Park, but you're at ground level and it's not the best insulated of places. So we'd, we'd agreed to stay the night there and raise a few quid and just, just get involved, really. Um, the thing that made it kind of surreal was we all knew we were going home. And, so, uh, so how many? This would be about a background. There was about, this is, about this, 150 this, people turned up in total. That was in total. So this is this is a new Lennon Celtic Supporters Club, which you helped run at a Stoke in Trent, mm-hmm. right? And uh, a bunch of lasses from Hollyoaks. Is that correct? Well, there was one. <laughs> you you told us there was a bevy of beauty was, from Hollyoaks. That's no, why. That's a carry told on. us there was oh, a bevy of beauties for Hollyoaks. So he's no Chinese then. He's still models. The oh well, we were expecting some similar to one of these old beauty pageant competitions, but it wasn't quite like that. Uh, there was a couple of what you would call celebrities there. There was a couple of cameramen running around interviewing people. To be honest, most of them just wanted to take pictures of the dog. Um, well, I, that was, that was disappointed. That? Did, <laughs> I took my collie dog down with me. Uh, Does that dog know ca- suffered enough? Does that dog know suffered <laughs> enough in the house for you that you have to take the poor soul out on a night out to Stokes I mean, she she made me suffer, suffer that. Two hours I was outside trying to wait for Good. Once you get bedded down, because mind, you have a couple of sleeping bags, you have one of these cardboard boxes laid out as a mattress, and you you've got a few layers on yourself, so once you've settled down for the night, you don't want to get back up again, least of all for a dog that needs to go out. So I took her out to try and encourage her to do what she had to do, which took about an hour and a half. Everybody else thought I'd went to the pub across the road, which shows how much trust they've got in me. And I took her back in. Uh, she'd, she'd done nothing. She was she was too excited, as it were. Uh, she just came back in, settled down. We just kept watch on us while we were sleeping. Border Collie. No, the dog was too excited. She was enjoying it. It was an adventure for her. The rest of us were just freezing. And that was the thing. Um, and thing we, we, Lou McCarry, was there? Yeah, yeah, he was there. Back to the mic, back to the mic. There's a fella called Nello. I think his name is. He used to be the kit man at Stoke, and he does a lot of charity work as well. And they do a kind of double act... I, you know these evenings where you go along and you do questions and answers they've always done a wee double light it's quite funny, it's quite a good night and uh, he was there as well um, Just uh, the, the whole idea was to raise awareness to get people knowing what's going on here there were food bank people there as well um, we've also decided now as a supporters club to get involved with the food banks here because uh, Ken Loach, the director 
He was in Stoke last night with uh, one of these showings of, and a question and answer of that film. Is it I, Daniel Blake? I missed that. I was one. Yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, and apparently for a city of 250,000 people, um, I, I was astonished at this. I know there's a lot of food banks around here. There are 48,000 people in the last four years have used at some point a food bank in Stoke and Trent. Uh, you maybe noticed there's a by-election here as well because uh, Tristan Hunt. The, 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 there's a by-election. No, he certainly, he, that, he, he certainly was. Tristan, who's away to be a director of the yeah, yeah, whatever, the Royal Albert Hall. World's first rhyming slang MP. Yeah, for two hundred eighty thousand yeah. pound a year. Right, he's away, and uh, it's there's one or two people throwing their hat in the ring to to get the job now. Uh, are they all? People, uh, people uh, of, it's quite a high what you would call UKIP area and uh, Brexit, because down here there's an awful media campaign to blame foreigners for everything, and the old empire should come back and then we can all live ten to a bed again. Um, Phil Nuttall, Paul Nuttall, Paul I can't Nuttall, remember. Paul Nuttall, Paul Nuttall. He's a liar. Aye, the one that helped Noah onto the ark and everything. Well, he's the main campaigner here. He even rented a house and pretended that he lived here, put that address down on the electoral form, which should immediately debar him because that's fraud. I'm sure somebody gets sent to prison for doing something similar in a, a council election in Derby. But the next couple of weeks, it's there's going to be a lot of focus on the place, and I'm I'm kind of worried that they're going to focus on the wrong things, which, uh, I mean, Stoke's lost a lot. It's lost the, the pottery industry, it's lost the coal industry, it's lost the steel industry. And all the the secondary businesses that come with that, yeah, it still sort of toddles along, and it's there's still a lot of sort of the earth people here. It's maybe struggling for an identity of its own, and unfortunately, the identity that it seems to be getting is food banks and sleepouts for the homeless. It's city centre's terrible for it. It's worse than Glasgow. Um, you know, around the train station, around that kind of area where you you get the Romanians and you get the homeless in Glasgow. It, it's They've even closed the public toilets down in the city centre here because the homeless were using them, which is another great practical solution. You'd, you'll see a lot of it over the next uh, couple of weeks. Now, I hope we come out of it with uh, an MP that's got a wee bit of common sense and maybe tells the truth and actually does something uh, for the, don't, don't the place. Don't you, the MPs will concentrate on the nice photos with babies and <laughs> ensuring, ensuring the camera is turned the other way where there's six people in the crowd to make it look as though there's 60 people in the crowd and let us know what yeah. what's around the corner. As long as you get me elected, I won't actually stay in Stoke, but I'll try and visit as often as possible for my surgery. That's, that was, that's pretty much what they all say. Yeah, exactly. This guy went one step further. Uh, there's a, a row of terraced houses by the hospital, and in July it was still up for rent. Uh, the Google, what do you call Google Street Map? Yeah. When you look at it, it's there and it says to let. But now he's said he's lived there for ages. Uh, one of my son's pals lives pretty much in the same street and the, the whole entourage was down taking photographs of him that you could only imagine. And I'm not saying for a moment he's a liar. He, everybody else has been doing that and he's been making a fine job of it himself. Uh, and you get the feeling they're going to date these pictures to make it look like he's been there for ages. I'm hoping he just does the honourable thing and withdraws. Right, bring, bringing it back to the Macari Centre. So we're, <laughs> there you are, still content publicity. <laughs> no, so get me this has been a party of our broadcast on behalf of the Stoke and Trent Celtic Supporters Club, well, what uh, you well, you know, fund, funded by Lou Macari. The so, thing about Macari is it's a completely hands-on operation. He's there pretty much every night of the week. The the rapport he's got with the, the guys that are in there is fantastic. And it's not just a case of giving them someone to sleep. What happens when they get in, they get help with, you know, like benefits that they're entitled to, with getting their foot back on the, the bottom rung. He'll take them to some, some agencies that have got houses. He'll get, try and get them places of their own. There's a few of them get jobs. And it's kind of a, a halfway house, if you like. Once they're in there, they've got a chance of getting some something out of it. They've got a chance of making a fresh start, and it's it's working. Yeah, good. But obviously, so, it needs money. Yeah, good. So um, how, how did you go on with the whole sponsorship? Eh, I've not looked at it, but it was uh, well over a thousand pounds. Yeah, last that's time I was the same. I which is astonishing. 
Abs and everybody on the site that's put money into it, thanks. Especially to Margot, uh, that was a fantastic gesture. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, it's just a matter of raising the awareness. And we were out in where were we today? Manchester somewhere. And my son went out and he bought a couple of croissants, you know, to eat on. So, sorry, said, sorry, this is Stoke or oh, Manchester? Sorry, so he's like Stoke and you go to Manchester, you go all continental. Is that what happens? Absolutely. A few croissants here, right, Hector. Croissants. Yeah. Oh, sounds fantastic. <laughs> no pasties. No, no. Croissants. My, my son's a wee bit of a right winger. Maybe, you know, we could have a word with Brendan. Mm-hmm. Um, but there was a homeless fella outside, and he took his cro- and he gave him one of the croissants, and then he gave him a bottle of water to wash it down with. Yeah. And I said, uh, you changed. He says, well, you, you do, though, don't you, Dad? Oh, that was nice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've no idea if you. Has he been doing your Tramadol again? Is that what's. <laughs> <laughs> we get new offices and we found a big box of them. It's brilliant. I don't even need to go to the doctors for the next lot. Oh, well, I could, I could suggest one way you could make money for the McCarry Centre, but let's not go there. Uh, yeah, but again, if we, we'll have to try and have a think to see if there's anything we can do, I think, also to try and help. Uh, get as much money it's or... Not just that. There'll, there'll be a similar place in Glasgow as well. Yeah, that's well, true. And again, like, Hector, you've done a lot for the the food banks up here, the North East, Glasgow North East, etc. And again, the Green Brigade the 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 did great work. The last time I was up there, I met the last few that runs that, or yeah. does something with that. Yeah. Um, and she was saying, we were talking about food banks, and she was saying the amount of help that has to be given out, and this is the 21st century. Mm-hmm. They stop and think this is you can oh. computers on your you can get anything you want just off your phone. And, and, and yeah, there's people can't get bed to eat, rest on, or something to eat when they're hungry. It's it's not right. And yeah, and we're not going to be on the peak yet. This is the start, I think. Sadly. Yeah, I think it's going to get a lot worse. Yeah. There you are. We've touched on. Well, we are a politically minded. Uh, oh, exactly. Is it? Well, this is it. We've discussed this many times. Celtic without politics is not really Celtic, is it? Uh, okay, so that that was that was that was tonight's podcast, folks. Realistically, we, we we covered Celtic. We've covered, as I say, I wanted to really cover that uh, the whole McCarry Centre thing. So thanks for that, Ralph. Uh, we'll, we'll get another one set up in the next few weeks so we can cover the the last at Rangers. Uh, Ralph, you've had a few updates in regards to Resolution 12, and you're looking to pick up the parking issue, I believe, the new parking curfew that. May come in thanks to our friends at Glasgow District Council. Did you say friends? <laughs> yeah, well, that's uh, the H- Hector and I know that may be a bit yes. tongue in cheek. Yeah, yes. indeed, indeed. And, and, also, and there's also the the police thing, which uh, I'll, be, I'll be talking a bit more about that in the diary tomorrow. But um, that's something we need to keep an eye on. The club are definitely monitoring, and the club have had meetings with the uh, with Police Scotland, and I think. <sighs> I think the the 70 or 80 guys that are constantly getting filmed need to watch their steps, not because they're doing anything wrong, but I think because they're perceived to be doing something wrong. And I can see a, a it's a bit of a powder keg situation that's maybe been played down a wee bit did for whatever you, reason. Did, did, did you see the, the, the banner at St. Johnson's game after they played us? I did die. That was very interesting. And it's it's, the whole thing, it was a Celtic St. Johnston game. And people were getting shepherded out by horses. There's, oh, again, I, I don't know. I think we've got a lot of things to discuss the next, yeah. the next podcast. Yeah. So, so clearly, clearly we're keeping Hector away from Death in Paradise, which is now starring Ardo O'Hanlon, in case anyone was interested in the new lineup. Does he play uh, Father Dougal Maguire? Yeah, <laughs> well, basically, he plays, if you can imagine Father Dougal Maguire impersonating Columbo. Then that's the sort. Of, that's that's the sort. Of, that's how he's playing the detective. And, but he's not very good like, with his son, if I remember rightly. What, he's got like, all or Fabio Maguire? Ardo Hanlon, good in the sun. I don't think Ardo no. Hanlon doesn't seem to be a son. Read it to me. I'm sure I've seen a picture of it in a documentary about priests where he, he got all bumped. <laughs> documentary. <laughs> uh, there's a there's a lovely image. Oh, Hector, right? Let's let's try and end on a, a happy note, right? Even though we've already discussed it. We'll, we'll, be, we'll be mentioning Mark Robinson and the Rangers fiasco in the next podcast. Hector, you put out a, a, you put out a Twitter question tonight about 
what was again, what qualities could Donald Trump bring as new manager of Rangers Football Club? Indeed. Did we get any replies? Indeed. So let's let's get through the replies, shall we, Daisy? Okay. You, you, you carry on. I'll, you you start it, and I'll catch up. Okay. okay well, I'll go to the bottom of the replies. You go to the top. Let that. me. Okay. Give me a, give me a second here. I find it. God, you've been busy while we've been speaking. I don't. Bamport's question. Here you are. Right, okay, uh, so you missed the f- I, I've got the top, with James Dolman at the top. Yeah, and I've got the one at the very yeah. bottom. Yeah, from so Stuart, this, from Stuart Murphy, yeah. Definitely, right, so just to let you catch up here, Ralph, our good friend James Dolman, he suggested Donald Trump could bring humility as the new manager of Rangers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, on you go, Hector. Uh, Stuart Murphy, what qualities could Donald Trump bring as the new manager of Rangers? Stuart Murphy, being a glib and shameless liar. <laughs> well, that was put straight in. Uh, Fundally Mundally suggests a knowledge of employment law and the hiring firing process. That would be ideal. You, you, you could sack the non existent HR department then. Um, what qualities could Donald Trump bring as the next manager of Rangers? This guy, Hector, no relation. Um, his response, he is very orange. So we'd be a big <laughs> hit. <laughs> we'd be a big hit with the orcs. <laughs> yeah. Definitely, that orange face could attract a nice. It could also attract a nice sponsorship deal with Tango, surely. Uh, James Dolman also suggests public relations, but Timothy Jellington, <laughs> God bless him, he's actually writ it, written it, and I, I, I'm a bit like Barry Ferguson, I can't, I can't do accents, but he's written it like Donald Trump, so it says, bear with me here, and I don't even know what the problem is. I mean, seriously, only I can fix things. Believe me, I'm hearing that. They're saying, I'd improved their honesty. I'm hearing that a lot. They say great things. I could do a great deal very quickly, very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next one, guy called Trevor, Trevor Gregg, T Gregg 76. What qualities could Donald Trump bring as the new manager of Rangers? In a word, Presbyterianism. <laughs> Storm the wave. Storm the wave, yes. In fact, okay, okay. Uh, Dardo 1967, Lightly Bonanza, and Harold Forsberg. Right, I'm going to combine these because. Uh, Dardo, the hordes would love the fact that they've got an orange man in charge. Right, likely Bonanza, he's orange! Exclamation mark. Harold Foster, a huge orange boost and fake news experience to the maximum, not to forget his totally huge winning. <laughs> uh, next one, um, what qualities could Donald Trump bring as the new manager of Rangers from Tall Boy Poppy? If you see this, in an East Enders accent, which we struggle with, the clan suit his father wore. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, GC, GGC, 967, Bigliness, uh, and then Tony, the Stormlands, he's a four time bankrupt with an uncanny ability to fleece the moronic. Perfect match. Henky Seven Boy wrote <laughs> an electoral college, and Brian McSporin. Tax dodging and construction. That would fit in really well there, but it's tax oh. dodging and construction. Co- right. Co- Colin Stephen, the fans are always talking about defending walls, so he may be well received. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, come on, you boys in green. They would maybe get that hotel built. <laughs> <That's a laugh. laughs> Uh, I'm going to skip by the next two because we've kind of covered them. And this is probably the last one, Daisy. Right. I think this is fitting. From the wonderfully titled King Joby. <laughs> I believe <that's> it. <laughs> and I love the one word response. He's right. What qualities could Donald Trump bring as the new manager of Rangers? King Joby responds, realism. That's uh, Donald Trump <laughs> is realism. So relative. <laughs> we, couldn't, we couldn't finish on a more funny line than that. I actually like the fact that King Joby's got a wee shite emoji next to his name just to, just to, just to sum it up. Uh, so that was us. So thanks very much, folk, for listening. Uh, as always, the podcast will be up on Spreaker, which you'll hopefully you'll find it there, as well as Ethan's uh, site right alongside the diary. Uh, anything exciting to preview or to uh, tease us with for the diary tomorrow, Ralph? Any exclusives? This is a Police Scotland thing, I think. Okay, so look out for that, folks. Enjoy the diary every day. Uh, this, like, le- this leaves it to me. I will go and find a suitable song for playing out. It was meant to be a Mark Warburton one and also a uh, 
dedicated one to Lee Clark for a Kilmarnock fan who's a friend of mine who's a bit upset. But we'll have to change it now to a Celtic one. Uh, so this left for me to say thank you very much to Hector Bandido. Thanks, guys. Enjoyed that. Thank you. Lovely. Yep. And also thanks very much to Ralph Malf. Cheers. Thanks. Enjoy right. it. Okay, folks. Thanks for listening. Good night. So far.